today I'd like to talk about uh, game length and content. And it's, it's uh, I mean, I guess maybe it's kind of a sensitive subject because it is certainly a lot of the negative feedback we're getting on, on Never Any Nightmares are related to either the amount of content or the game length or both. And so, I mean, uh... I really don't understand exactly where the critics are coming from, and uh, I don't mean to say this as, you know, a defense of, you know, Never Any Nightmares being a, a perfect game, but more that, you know, I want to understand um, what's going on and, and why um, people, uh, you know, are not... Uh, why uh, not everyone loves Never Ending Nightmares. And so uh, I think it's worth looking at uh, other games and, uh, you know, uh, talking about uh, how much content they have. And so, like, uh, if you look at Vanishing of Ethan Carter, uh, there's not a, a ton of con I mean, obviously they have this beautifully rendered world, but... You know, for for a, a game world, it's it's on the small side, right? You're just in Red Creek Valley. There's, you know, X number of houses. There's a church. There's whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, like, I don't know, ten puzzles or something. And, and uh, you know, they're not, like, super puzzling uh, unless you're me and totally don't understand how the mechanics work. But if you're not me, then... I don't know. I mean, a, a lot of people are like, oh, I burned through that in, you know, two to four hours, you know, no problem. And I think maybe I, I spent, like, uh, you know, three or four hours on it, you know, after failing miserably at it for, like, 45 minutes and then using a walkthrough and then getting confused and, I don't know, I uh, had trouble finding places and stuff, but... I mean, I think in terms of, you know, generating a lot of content, a lot of the content in, in, um, uh, in Vanishing of Ethan Carter, you know, a lot of the playtime is exploring the world, uh, and, you know, um, certainly that's a good thing, and certainly we wanted, uh, exploration to be sort of a theme in uh, Never Ending Nightmares. Um, now, uh, obviously, um, you know, Never Ending Nightmares, well, I don't know, I think one person said, you know, they played both and they spent the same amount of time on Vanishing of Ethan Carter and Never Ending Nightmares, um, which is interesting. Um, I think most people play uh, Never Ending Nightmares for, for less time, but uh, I mean, I wonder if you take out, you know, the time that you're just walking from... Well, I mean, obviously, the, if you remove the walking from point A to point B, um, from Never Ending Nightmares, you're not left with much. But I think it's it's the same thing with Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Um, and I think Vanishing of Ethan Carter, you know, has more walking, um, but uh, it's it's perhaps more enjoyable, and, uh, I guess it's something we're going to come back to, but also let's, let's talk about Gone Home. Gone Home has significantly less content, I would say, than Vanishing of Ethan Carter. You're just in a house, and, um, you know, there's a few things you can interact with, some, some, uh, I mean, I guess they sort of do the amnesia thing where you can, like, pick up an object and look at it, um, and then drop it. Um, so, like, you can pick up a VHS tape that is, you know, no bearing on, on the game, or, like, the, the fake Super Nintendo cartridges and look at it and put it down. Um, so, uh, you know, there's that. And then, of course, there's exploring the, the house, but, I mean, it, it's, I don't know if people would say Gone Home has puzzles exactly, and, and certainly it's, uh, it, it's a pretty short game. Um, definitely it's a really good game, but, you know, the question is, what did they do that, that Never Ending Nightmares didn't, uh, you know, to make Gone Home, 
you know, feel like the right length, whereas, you know, maybe Never Ending Nightmares feels, uh, you know, too short. Uh, and, um, I don't really have an answer to that, but, I mean, an, another game, certainly Amnesia Dark Descent, uh, one of the things that I really like about it is there's not a ton of content, right? You're just in a castle, there's a lot of texture reuse, but, uh, you know, they're able to do a lot with, you know, a little. There's, like, two or three character models, uh, in the entire game, um... So, I mean, like, you know, they had a very limited development resource, uh, you know, because they're, they're indie, and they created this amazing game. And, uh, again, it sort of uh, makes me wonder what they did right that, that we did wrong. Uh, I mean, certainly Amnesia is, is a lot uh, longer game, um, but one would think, you know... At least, I don't know how many reviews for Amnesia I've read, but certainly people don't say, oh, you know, you reuse that castle texture too much or something, because, I mean, it's a castle, right? And so it's like, we're in a, in a mansion, and certainly our mansion has, has variety, but... Uh, and then again, Fatal Frame 3, certainly not my favorite Fatal Frame... Well, maybe let's take a look at Fatal Frame 1. Fatal Frame 1, again, you're in this mansion... Uh, they basically, every sort of level sort of reboots and, and starts you in the same mansion, but things are a little different. The setups are a little different on the, the different nights. And, and, you know, they do open a few extra places, but in general it's still, uh, you know, reusing the same content. And I think that's really, uh, really intelligent. And certainly, you know, Fatal Frame 2 uh, has a whole city and a whole lot more content. But, I mean, Fatal Frame 1 is, is, is a really well done game and doesn't have a ton of content. So, I mean, to some extent this is more a question for you, the watchers, but why is it that, you know, other games can get by without creating a ton of content and, uh, you know, Never Ending Nightmares, you know, gets a lot of, of flack for that. You know, not enough interactive objects, not enough... Um, uh, you know, unique locations, not enough, <coughs> I don't know, wallpaper textures, I, I, I'm not entirely certain what people are, are, are looking for, um, but, uh, again, um, I mean, to some extent, I feel like if your game is in 3D, then you kind of get a free pass, um, and I'm not sure why that is, but I think, um, you know, perhaps something about, about 3D navigation makes uh, moving through the world, um, feel like you're, you're doing more, um, because, uh, I don't know. So that's just one theory. Again, obviously not a very good or fleshed out one, but just some, some things I was thinking about uh, is that, you know, 3D navigation is, is somehow inherently more interesting than 2D navigation, which, I mean, I, I certainly can see, you know, like, in, in Never Ending Nightmares, it's a lot of moving left to right, sometimes right to left, you know, you go up and down stairs and you go... Um, uh, you know, into the screen for some doors and some, um, you know, corners and hallways, but, I mean, uh, it's, it's certainly not the same thing as, as navigating a, a, a 3D world, even though we tried to sort of plan out a 3D world and make the, uh, rooms correspond to that. Um, so, I mean, you know, I would like to continue making, uh, stylized 2D horror games, so... Uh, if that's the case, that's, uh, sort of bad for me, uh, if, if the only way to, to make, you know, navigating, uh, the world compelling, um, is to do it in 3D. Uh, another theory is, you know, just the act of, of, you know, being able to open drawers and pick up that VHS tape and, and twirl it around, uh, you know, uh, just interaction for interaction's sake, um, may make, um, may make the, the, the game feel like you're doing more than just, um, uh, mo moving from point A to point B. Um, 
And certainly in defense of Never Ending Nightmares, I mean, the whole game is about tension, and the, the moving is about creating a, a tense environment where you don't know what will happen and, and where there's, you know, potential horrors around every corner. Um, but, I mean, I'm not trying to do this video to, to defend uh, Never Ending Nightmares, uh, you know, the merit of the game. Um, because, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think I would rather, you know, just try to understand uh, the, 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 the critics and, and potentially improve. Um, but, I mean, like, just the act of interacting with things, um, I don't know if that's enough or that if that's, uh, you know, because some people have criticized, you know, the interactions uh, don't further the, the game. Um, Whereas, you know, I mean, certainly I think in, in Gone Home, uh, a lot of the interactions don't, you know, picking up that SNES cartridge uh, is not like, oh, this is the important plot point SNES cartridge, although I think they were talking about SNES cartridges and some, some of the letters, but I think it's um, entertaining because you're like, I remember having a SNES cartridge. Well, I have a lot of SNES cartridges, but... Uh, maybe not everyone still has their, their SNES. Uh, and, you know, like, I remember, you know, recording, like, Muppets Tonight on VHS uh, the, or X-Files, uh, you know, um, back in the, the 90s. Uh, so, I mean, I think, you know, the sort of retro throwback uh, really helped Gone Home. I think, you know, Gone Home set today in a normal house would not be nearly as interesting, at least not to me. And, and maybe it's just because, you know, I like that sort of, uh, you know, 90s memories and, and uh, you know, that, that was kind of cool for me. But um, maybe it, that wasn't really a consideration for others. But, I mean, I think that made it a cooler space to explore. And, I mean, certainly, you know, Never Ending Nightmares is takes place in, like, 1906, and, you know, we, we try to have, um, you know, interesting interactions. I mean, certainly we, we've gotten some flack for, uh, you know, doing the closer look on the, the backer portraits, which I guess maybe in hindsight was not the best idea, um, but our rationale was w w during production we drew these beautiful versions of everyone's faces and then we realized they totally didn't fit the art style. So then, you know, towards the, the tail end of development, you know, a, a, a lot of people requested more interactions and so we're like, okay, we, we can do that, sure. Uh, and, and certainly if you look in the past month, we got a lot more uh, interactions in. Um, but, you know, uh, I guess, you know, these weren't interactions that revealed uh, anything about the, the story. I mean, certainly they weren't the most interesting interactions unless you know the, the, the person who, who backed it or, or you, it, it's you. Um, so, I mean, like, you know, but for us, it was just like, hey, we could make the world more interactive if we do these because we've already drawn you know, the, the, the more detailed faces. Uh, so for us, it was just, you know, this is a way we can easily get in more interactions because we screwed up, you know, in production uh, and otherwise would have just wasted all these beautiful drawings we did. Um, you know, more so than we felt like, hey, the game definitely needs these interactions. But I guess, you know, interactions for interactive sake doesn't necessarily, you know, placate all the critics, but, uh, at that point, right, like, um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's confusing. Uh, to be honest, it's a little discouraging, um, because I'm thinking, you know, for the next game, right, like, we're not gonna have a huge budget, um, and, uh, you know, it's definitely going to be, you know, trying to make the most of, of you know, the art time we have. Uh, and, um, I don't know, um, 
Well, it, it'll certainly be interesting to see um, uh, how that, uh, you know, well, what we can do and, and how we can address that in, in future projects. Or, or maybe we don't, maybe we can't. I, I don't know. But it's certainly something I, I'm thinking about. So, uh, anyway, I figured I'd record the developer diary and, and uh, maybe ask you guys and, and, and see if you guys have any better ideas than I do. Anyway, thanks for watching.